this part we will learn about periodic winds uh, as the name suggests suggest these winds are characterized by reversal in wind direction which may be seasonal or daily there are two uh, types of periodic winds now we will learn that is land breeze and sea breeze these are ex experienced in the coastal areas the solar energy hits up the land very rapidly the air in contact with the hot surface absorbs heat ascends and creates a, a, a area an area of low pressure the sea takes a, a, a longer time to heat and experience high pressure when hot air rises above the land cool sea breeze takes its place that is sea breeze and when sun sets the land cools down faster while water takes longer to cool down high pressure is created over the land since the water over the sea is warm the air above the sea gets heated and rise now the cool land breeze blows out towards the sea that we call it land breeze this diagram you need to learn the second periodic wind that is monsoon wind the word monsoon originates from the arabic word called mosim which means season the land and the sea breeze follow a daily pattern that we learned earlier while the monsoon winds follow a seasonal pattern because in the definition of periodic wind we learn that these winds can be daily winds or it can be seasonal wind so monsoon is a seasonal wind it follows seasonal pattern there are two parts in the monsoon wind one is summer monsoon another one is winter monsoon so first summer monsoon the monsoon winds are experienced in the tropical belt over the southern and the southeastern parts of the asian landmass and the northern australia with the shift in the pressure belts in the summer the equatorial low pressure belt which we learned earlier that this belt is also known as intertropical convergence zone is also shifts and rest over the northern plains in india this cause the southeast trade winds to reach the equator cross it and get deflected from the moisture bearing southwest monsoon winds remember during the summer monsoon the direction of monsoon wind is southwest these winds move towards the indian subcontinent and cause heavy rainfall during the summer time the landmass uh, of uh, of this indian subcontinent uh, experience very high temperature which creates a low pressure whereas uh, coastal areas or the uh, adjoining areas uh, it uh, they are experiencing high pressure because we know that the sea takes a longer time to heat and experience that's why it experience high pressure so the direction of the wind during the summer time that is sea to land okay as you can see in the diagram the land mass uh, the, in the land mass area there is a presence of low pressure and the sea and the coastal areas there is a presence of high pressure the next one is winter monsoon with the shifting of the pressure belts towards the tropic of cancer the phenomena of the withdrawal of monsoon takes place the asian landmass cools and high pressure develops the itcj cz that is intertropical convergence zones south shift south and lies over the northern australia so these cause the northeast trade winds to cross the equator deflect and from and form the northwest monsoon that means in the winter the direction uh, of the wind that is southeast and we call it um, uh, southeast monsoon wind and these asian landmass is dominated by the northeast trade winds which are dry on the land these winds moving towards the equator pick up moisture from the bay of bengal on the way and give rain uh, winter rain to the coromandel coast in tamil nadu this is called northeast monsoon or winter monsoon so remember the winter monsoon is also known as northeast monsoon because direction of the wind this time is northeast whereas in the summer monsoon we learn the direction of the wind is south west let's learn about local winds local winds occur over a small region uh, and are related to the topographical features and local pressure conditions of that particular area so here i have mentioned few important local winds that is uh, lu first is lu so it is a hot local wind experienced during the summer months 
so these winds uh, is basically extremely dry and hot winds blow out the blow out of the third desert into the adjoining plains of northwest india and uh, because of this uh, hot local wind the temperature increases in the summer time in the places like delhi punjab and haryana the next is chinook which is also known as snow eater because it rises the temperature why because it is a warm dry wind experienced in the eastern slopes of of the rockies okay so rocky uh, we know the uh, rockies it is a uh, young fold mountain which is situated in the no in north america the chinook which we learn it is called snow eater why because it uh, rises the temperature and melts the snow on the mountain slopes the next is fawn this warm wind uh, forms in the same way as chinook the fawn is experienced in the valleys of the northern alps in spring especially in uh, switzerland mistral which is a cold dry freezing wind experience uh, in winter in the rhone valley it is a violent wind it, it lowers the temperature because it is a cold wind and blows continuously for several days our next topic is the mountain or valley winds so uh, the first uh, is catabatic wind so the catabatic winds blow from a uh, high altitude areas to the valleys or plains in some cases they can exceed uh, 160 km per hour they occur all over the world have different names depending on their location some of the cold catabatic winds are called mistral in the southern france um, then Boda in the Hungarian uh, basin. So the names are different in different places. So at night, down valley winds blow from the chilly mountain slopes towards the valley floats. The dense, the cold dense wind slides down the slopes due to the gravity that we call it valley wind or catabatic wind. The next is uh, anabatic wind. So what happened? that anabatic winds are um, upslope winds driven by warmer surface temperatures on a mountain slope than the surrounding area column sorry surrounding air column these are found in the mountainous region uh, so the um, during daytime the valley floors become warmer compared to the higher slopes of the mountains the warm winds um, then blow up the slope of a valley during the day and uh, these winds called mountain wind or anabatic wind now let's learn the variable winds so these winds affect only a small area and last for few days okay now these variable winds um, uh, um, the best example of variable wind is cyclone and anticyclone the cyclone there are two types of cyclone one is tropical cyclone another one is a temperate uh, cyclone so let's uh, learn uh, what is cyclone so a cyclone is a rotating storm uh, with low pressure at the center as you can see in the diagram l means low pressure so low pressure at the center and the high pressure at the uh, periphery so the winds blow from the outer areas towards the low pressure uh, at the center in the northern hemisphere the winds uh, within a cyclone move in um, move in an anti-clockwise direction and in the southern hemisphere they move in clockwise direction okay so uh, now let's learn the about tropical cyclone uh, basically the formation of cyclone and tropical cyclone is same uh, so what is tropical cyclone a small uh, intense low pressure system originates in the tropical latitudes uh, between 6 degree to 20 degree north and south they occur uh, over all the oceans except the south atlantic and are known as hurricane in the west indies then uh, gulf of uh, and gulf of mexico typhoon in china sea and cyclone um, in Indian Ocean, uh, Indian Ocean, willy willies of the coast of northwestern Australia. Names are different. Okay, now let's talk about its characteristics. So the air becomes still uh, with high temperature and uh, humidity before arrival of the cyclone. The pressure gradient in the tropical cyclone is extremely steep. The 
center of the storm or we call it eye okay so the eye of a storm is a small region a region of calm and light variable winds calm air descends at the eye the